Hello battery lovers! If you follow my channel, you know that there are different sizes of cylindrical lithium-ion cells, and I've tested many of them, from 10440 to 26800. This is the first time I've got an 18350 size cell. Queen battery 18350, which is rated at 900 million powers and supports discharge current up to 9 amps or 10 C. It has the same 18 mm diameter as the 18650 size, but it's much shorter. 45 mm versus 65. This difference makes it useful in situations where the diameter is ok, but the length is the problem, and even 18500 size is too long. I've put together 10440, 14500, 18350 and 18650 size cells to make the difference visible. Now let's move to the section about my testing conditions, then we're gonna pass to the results of capacity tests. All the tests were done using a special battery tester, the ZKE Tech EBC820, which supports 4 wire measurement, discharge current up to 20 amps, and it can be connected to a PC for building graphs. I've upgraded my battery holder to the version 3.0. I have made contact pads from 0.5mm pure copper sheet. The positive terminal is 9mm wide and the width of negative terminal is 11.5mm. The pads are designed to provide good connection even with batteries which have deep placed positive or negative contacts. I've followed all the prescriptions of the IEC 61960 standard concerning battery's capacity measurement. The surrounding air temperature was 20-25 centigrees and before each discharging cycle the battery was charged at its standard charging current which is mentioned in its datasheet and after that it was left for one hour minimum, as the standard requires. After this charging cycle, the battery was again left for one hour minimum. I buy my batteries from Queen Battery, which is my reliable supplier of genuine batteries. They offer individual approach to each customer and special discounts depending on the quantity you buy. You can find a link to their website and their sales manager's email in the description under this video. The heat shrink tube of the cell doesn't have much information on it. It shows only the model number, nominal capacity and nominal voltage. QB18350 has the following specs according to its datasheet. Nominal capacity 900 milliamp hours, but it's measured at 0.5C discharge, not at 0.2C. Nominal voltage 3.7 volts, standard charge current 450 milliamps, maximum charge current 900 milliamps, charge end voltage 4.2 volts, charge cutoff current 9 milliamps. I've used 100 milliamp cutoff current due to restrictions of my battery tester. Ambient temperature during charging from 0 to 45 centigrees, during discharging from minus 20 to 60 centigrees, maximum continuous discharge current 9 amps. Discharge cutoff voltage 2.75 volts. Internal resistance 80 milliohms. Weight 25 grams. Cycle life. The capacity should be more than 80% of initial value after 150 cycles at 0.5C charge 1C discharge or after 500 cycles at 0.5C charge 0.5C discharge. The measured weight of my cell was 23.9 grams. The diameter was 18.2 millimeters and it was 44.9 millimeter long. The DC internal resistance measured at 900 milliamps in fully charged condition was around 19 milliohms. At 0.2C or 0.18 amps, Queen Battery QB18350 gave out 1142 milliamp hours or 4189 milliwatt hours. At 2 amp discharge, the result was 1012 milliamp hours or 4582 milliwatt hours. At 5 amp discharge, 987 milliamp hours or 4340 milliwatt hours. At 9 amps it showed 876 milliamp hours or 28-21 milliwatt hours. Pay attention to the curve at 9 amps. There is a huge voltage seg and I don't recommend to discharge it at more than 5 amps. At 5 amp discharge and lower rates it seems to be ok. So there it is the QB18350. Its real capacity is not 900 milliamp hours but more than 1100. Queen battery underrates its cells by 200 milliamp hours for some reason and I like that approach when you got noticeably higher capacity than you think. 9 amp discharge seems too much to be held by this guy, but even 5 amps is a very good rate which it takes with no problem. Also the 2.75 volt discharge cutoff voltage may be a problem if your BMS cuts off at 2.5 volts, 
but usually we use 2.8 or 3V cutoff, so in most cases it won't be an issue. That's all about QB18350. Hit the like button if this test was interesting, subscribe to my channel and leave your thoughts under this video. See you very soon!